Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone, um, to our Tech Tuesday for Assistive Technology for Winter. And on this slide, I have a picture of a unicorn that is uh, in a bunch of snow, which is going to be coming soon. And it reads, have a magical holiday. And it's one of those blow up, um, light up uh, holiday decorations that you can place on your lawn. All right, next slide. So welcome. Um, I am Jaleesa Irwin. I'm the Outdoor Recreation AT Specialist at MDRC. Um, along with me today, there's Nick who will be chat moderating and mm -hmm. Sarah who will be switching slides. Um, on this image or on this slide, I have an image of myself wearing a trout fishing vest um, with green trees behind me and wearing sunglasses. So now it's time to get to know you. Um, if you'd like, type in the chat or unmute from what county you're from. And if you identify as a person with a disability, a family member, guardian, representative of education, representative of health and rehab, representative of community living, and representative of technology or other identity. We kind of just use this data to uh, for our federal data report that we have to do, just and just kind of get to know where everyone else is in the state of Michigan. We have one from Kelly. She says that she's a person from Ingham and a person with a disability. We also have one from Anna. She says she's from Muskegon and a person with a disability and also works in education. Welcome, welcome. All right, so at MDRC, our vision envisions a world where people with disabilities live full lives within the community with equal rights equal, and uh, equality and opportunities. Uh, we're valued as essential and vital members of the community. They can live their full selves in their identities in all aspects of their lives have space for self-discovery to cultivate community and develop pride. Our mission is to cultivate disability pride and strengthen the disability movement by recognizing disability as a natural and beautiful part of human diversity while collaborating to dismiss all forms of oppression. We also have one more from Joseph and it's, he's from Genesee County, a person with a disability and their husband is also a full-time caregiver. Welcome. All right, next slide. So here at MATP, or also known as Michigan Assistive Technology Program, um, we have a variety of tools and devices that can be loaned out. So what is AT? AT is any tool, software, or app that can be help people with disabilities, including older adults, do what they want to do. MATP helps people with disabilities gain access to AT devices that can assist with vision loss, hearing loss, cooking and eating, organizing, calendar reminders, transitioning, uh, mental health, outdoor recreation, gaming, crafting, gardening, and connecting with friends. MATP is a free program for people with disabilities by people with disabilities. We provide trainings on how to use AT devices. Short and long-term loans of AT are available to help identify what works and doesn't work for an ind individual. So now we're going to jump into some AT for winter. Um, the first on the list is adaptive clothing. So there's tons of varieties of different adaptive clothing, um, such as Velcro and snaps and ma magnets instead of uh, buttons or hard to zip zippers. Um, there's also shirts that open in the back for easy dressing. Um, there's little pockets that can hold pumps or um, insert tubes or wires or whatever may be needed. Um, there's zippers 
for that go down the downside of the leg on the pants. Um, and you can purchase these at many places. I was really surprised on where all the places that offer adaptive clothing. So some big places are Target, Duluth Trading Center. Um, Tommy Hilfiger has a large line of adaptive clothing out Kohl's. JC Penney and Etsy has quite a few options as well. So on this slide, I have three images. And the first one being a uh, jacket that is made by Tommy Hilfiger. And this jacket doesn't have any zippers. Instead, it has Velcro that attaches the, the uh, coat to clothes. Um, and it also has magnets in it as well. And then the inside of this jacket is kind of like the fluffy material that's soft. And the outside is, uh, I guess, protective rain gear material. The next image that I have on the slide is if, uh, or is a set or a pair of socks. And these socks have arrows on them. And what makes these adaptive is at the top of them, they have holes so that you're able to pull up your socks. Um, so you don't need to use a sock aid. Well, you might still need to, but this will definitely um, help getting on socks. And then the last image is of a hoodie. And this hoodie is um, brown and red. And it's kind of like a tie-dyed theme. This hoodie has a wide neck, so it's easy to put on and off. And it's also not tight around the neck. It has flat seams and it has a hidden abdominal access opening. And then Julissa, um, a question from the chat was, what if you do not have the income to purchase these items? So sometimes we are able to do um, loans on them to see if the AT does work for you and if not. Um, some instances we can do open-ended loans, which means that you can keep the item as long as you need it. And then that we also do have the resources for um, the like loans in order to purchase the items. And I believe it's UCP that does that. Um, and they would be able to help you get on the track to purchasing that. And next slide. And then we have more adaptive clothing. So the first image on the slide is of a pair of leather boots with fur at the top. And what makes these adaptive is that the, the zipper for it goes from all the way to the top of the boot and goes around the toe of the boot. So instead of trying to slip your foot or someone else's foot into the boot, you can unzip it all the way and you're able to just place the foot in there and then zip it back up. Then the next image on the slide is of a woman wearing a plaid fluffy coat. Um, it kind of looks like a flannel and it's brown and beige colors. And it has a set of buttons on it, but you don't necessarily need to use those buttons. There is no holes to place the buttons into it. Um, this is also magnetic, so you don't have to use the pesky buttons to button up your uh, coat or your flannel. And Duluth Trading Center makes a variety of um, flannels and coats that will um, help assist putting it on and everything like that. And you don't have to use the buttons. And the next image on the slide is of a pair of gloves. I found these on Etsy. Uh, instead of trying to slip your entire hand into the entire glove, this has Velcro that closes the glove. So all you have to do is just put your fingers inside of the finger parts of the glove, and then you can take the Velcro to uh, make a whole glove. And next slide. Now that we're all dressed up warm, we have snow removal, which is the least favorite part about winter. Um, the first image on the slide I have is of a battery operated Ryobi snowblower. And when I was looking at the specs of the snowblower, I was really surprised. The snowblower doesn't weigh more than two pounds and it's battery operated. 
Um, I wouldn't suggest doing a very long driveway for this um, or with the snowblower, but it will get like a smaller driveway done. It's battery operated. I believe the blade on it is only uh, 13 inches long and it will throw the snow a pretty good distance for you. And then the next image is of the Snow Joe shovel. And with this shovel, it has an extra handle on it, um, which prevents strain on the back. So instead of just gripping and throwing the snow with one handle, um, a lot of times you'd have to bend over to do that. So this extra handle is actually spring loaded and um, it just kind of helps fling the snow and gives your back a position where it doesn't put so much strain on it. And next slide. Oh, and another thing is, is that the Snow Joe, that brand also makes gardening shovels as well. So if when spring comes, <laughs> um, you could have that extra handle for gardening as well. So I have more snow removal, which the first image on the slide is of an ice scraper. Um, this ice scraper extends, I believe it extends, I can't remember the exact length that it extends, but it, you can clean off a truck with it. Um, it comes apart, so it's gonna be easy for storage. And um, so in the summertime, you can just store it in the bag underneath the seat. Um, Another thing is, is that one end of it has the bristly part of the brush. So if you want to just swipe off the snow, you can, but it also has the ice scraper on the back of it um, to scrape off the ice chunks. And like I said, this uh, extends it. You can add another um, piece to it so that it can become longer. And then it has the brush on one end and the ice scraper. And it comes with a bag to store everything in. And then I have a roof snow rake. So it's 17 inches wide, um, 16 foot long. And the this cleaning off your roof can prevent ice dams and damages to your roof. Um, all you have to do is just push the pole up your roof and then heavy snow will travel down the plastic part that is attached to it. So it's kind of like a slip and slide for snow. Um, and the gravity will basically let the snow fall. No tools are required to put this together. They kind of are all put together by push button snaps. And um, this is made for like standard asphalt roofs. And then we also have a question, um, which was from Anna and it was, will these slides or notes be available to us after? Cause she'd love a list of brands. Yes, and Nick is actually going to put in the chat a resource guide that has a link to all of these um, devices. We have most of them in our inventory, but like the clothing, it's really difficult to have um, so many different options for different body styles and types. So um, most of the items that are on the slide, like the uh, roof rake and the shovel and the scraper and stuff, we do have an inventory for folks to test out. And on this slide, we have holiday de decorations. So these are forms of AT. Um, if you want to skip the whole hanging up the lights process, which is a pain, and then you have to take them down, you can just use the projector lights. They have a variety of different, um, I guess, lenses that you can use on them. So if you celebrate Christmas, you could have Christmas things and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa. Um, you could just go with the standard snowflakes. And basically, these just project lights onto your house or um, that's what I would assume that you would put them on. Um, they're waterproof, they're sunproof, freeze-proof, um, and windproof. And then the next piece of AT I have is, uh, it's called the ELF. So it helps string uh, lights up onto trees or onto your house. It just is kind of like a little tube that hooks onto an extended pole. 
and um, it just kind of guides your lights onto the hooks that they need to be placed on or around the tree. It also comes with a bag and it also comes with a hook so that if you didn't want to use the tube, um, you could just use the hook, which is the next image. This is an Eversprout uh, telescoping pole um, that has a light hook on the bottom of it. So it attaches to the string of lights and then you're able to lift up to wherever you need your lights to go. And next slide. Uh, I was just going to add, um, oh. Kelly, Kelly said about the projector lights that she loves her, her projector lights, but her advice is to make sure that your window covering is thicker as the light can show through. <laughs> yes, yes, that makes sense. So now we have some snowball fun. Um, the first image is of a bunch of uh, fluffy snowballs. I guess they're plush material. Um, so these are for the days that it, maybe really too cold to go outside and have a snowball fight or there may not be snow um wishful thinking i know <laughs> but these um are also good for folks who may have sensory issues um or someone whose hands get too cold quickly um and a great option because they won't hurt when they hit you <laughs> um this is a 12 pack and it comes with a carrying case um, and they're sold on Amazon. I just thought they were cute. Decided to put them on here. Also, we have on the slide a snow slinger. And so what this does is it makes a snowball for you. It's a long handled device. And at the top of it, it's kind of like a crab claw, which makes a snowball. And then once your snowball is compacted in there, um, you can fling the snowball with this whole device. Um, I know that... Just like with making any snowball, you have to have like the good compacting snow to make a snowball. So if you had fluffy snow, then you would end up getting all the snow on you. <laughs> so that we do have that in our inventory and I did use it last year and it's quite fun. And then a message from Joseph and Kimberly. Uh, they said, these are so cool. I may be old, but I still want to have fun. LOL. Perfect. And you can have a snowball fight indoors with the plush ones, <laughs> which I like. <laughs> so here's some um, devices that I didn't really know much about, and I'm still doing research on it. And I know in the past we've gotten things that are devices that attach to someone's wheelchair, and it's quite difficult because every wheelchair is different. So these I'm not, we don't have in our inventory yet, but they're out there. And in the resource guide, I do have the links to uh, these snow skis. So what these do is the first image is of a long stroller and a child sitting in it with a backpack in the front and attached to the wheels on the bottom are snow skis that just attach to the wheel. Um, these make for easy pushing through the snow instead of trying to get the wheels to go through the snow. Um, so if parents want to take their children outside and they want to use this type of device, they can. Um, the second image is of a child sitting in his manual wheelchair um, on a mountainside. I don't know <laughs> that I would want to do that, but there are snow skis attached to his front wheelchair, wheelchair wheels. And these are just short snow, snow skis. And um, what these basically do is just make it so that he can get through the snow. Um, I've also read when researching these that if you get an all-terrain tire to put onto your wheelchair, um, it makes it more uh, or less difficult to get through the snow. And then I have another image of a closer shot of the short snow skis attached to a manual wheelchair. And then another question from Joseph, he asked, uh, are these, are, do they make these for adult use? Cause he would love these. Yes. Um, and that is on the resource guide. I believe that there is quite a few brands of ones that can go on adult wheelchairs as well. So the next slide I have is ice, ice safety. <laughs> so um, the winter and ice is not a fun time, especially when you're trying to walk on it. 
um, to get to point A to point B. Um, so grips to help you not slip on the ice are great. Uh, I on the first slide I have or first image I have a different options to put onto um, your hiking poles, and these are different baskets that makes it so that your hiking pole doesn't go through the snow. But also at the tip of the hiking pole there is a spike that can grip give you more grip for ice. And then on the middle image, I have a set of ice cleats. And these are basically just little diamond shaped uh, pieces of metal that go along your bottom of your boot or your shoe. And these kind of hook onto a rubber piece. What I found is that these are really big pain to put on any style of shoe. Um, they're easier to put on boots. They do have other options to for like Velcro ones. Um, I have not tested those out, but I am going to add those to the inventory due to the amount of people that had difficulty putting these on. Um, so yeah, these are really helpful. I use them when I go ice fishing. There's tons of different styles. Um, ones with little like circular ice spikes that come out of them instead of the diamond shape. Um, like I said, these ones are a pain in the butt. You have to take them off every time that you come inside as well, just for the fact of you don't want to scratch up your flooring. Um, so they're difficult to get on and off. The next image I have is of a cane with ice spikes attached to it. Um, I actually just put this on a woman's cane uh, the other day up in Marquette because she was worried about having her cane slip while walking on the ice um, or in the snow. And basically what this does is it has ice spikes at the bottom of it and it just kind of gives you that extra support so that your cane doesn't slip and slide on the ice. They're very easy to install. It's just two little screws that go onto the cane itself at the top. And then what's neat about these is that the little white circles that are at the top of the item, those you push in. And what happens is the spike folds up. So it's a quick and easy transfer from inside the house to um, go outside and from outside to go inside. And then we have and, a few, sorry, I was just going to well, add in a few good. comments. Um, Kelly said she loves the title. Um, Kimberly, who's with Joseph, was saying that she loved the um, the AT in the last slide because she missed cross country skiing. And then yes. Sarah also added in that yak tracks are life changing. Yes, and we do have in our inventory different uh, sizes of the the yak tracks as well. And now we have AT for ice skating. Um, so on the slide, the first image that I have is of kind of like a helper, um, like walker for specifically just for the ice. There's two different sizes. So there's a large one and a small one. And this just kind of uh, gives you the extra support of holding on to while ice skating. You can also use your standard walker if that's what you prefer or that's what you have. Um, I have an image on here of a young girl using her standard walker with wheels in the front and back. Um, and she's wearing a pair of ice skates along with uh, ankle braces. And I, in the resource guide, I do have a um, website, actually two websites that do have these items on there. Um, we're looking into getting ice skating AT as well for folks to test out. Um, so yeah. And then on the bottom image, I have a different form of ice skating. So this is for someone who may need to sit down while ice skating. This is a fancy device. It uh, has a lot, two long poles with a bucket seat on top. Um, and on the bottom of it, there's two different ice blades. Next slide. And now for ice fishing. <laughs> So this is one of my favorite hobbies to do. Um, it could be a fun activity to get outside. If it's not your thing, I completely understand. 
things to make ice fishing more enjoyable is to stay warm. So Mr. Buddy heaters are great for that. An ice house or ice shanty, as some like to call it, is another great option. Um, so the first device I have on here is a motion detected, uh, I guess, light up device. And so what this does is you place one of the item or one of the pieces, preferably the one that's a circular device, and it detects if your tip up flag pops up. So you could be up to a mile away. And what it will do is it will light up bright red. You also have a remote that um, you can turn on the device with, and then it, that also lights up. So if you are a mile away from your tip up, this remote will light up red and let you know that something has set off your tip ups. And I believe that it vibrates too. So it'd be good for low vision, um, those who are deaf or can't see far distances, whatever it may be, it is a good device to have. We also have devices to hold an ice fishing rod. Um, what this is, is it has a clip at the end of it. And then at the top of it, there's a spot where you can slide your pole, ice fishing pole in. So you don't have to sit there and hold your ice fishing rod. Um, and this just clips onto a five gallon bucket. And they make a variety, variety of these as well. And then we have an ice spike anchor, um, which this device helps or it goes onto the ice spike and you hook it up to a drill and then you apply a little pressure and the ice spike anchor goes into the ice. So with just standard pop-up shanties, um, you don't have really any weight to hold down the ice shanty and it's really hard to get the ice spikes in by hand. So what this device does is it just helps drill in to the ice spikes into the, uh, into the ice. And then I have a jet sled, which can be used for multiple uh, things. I've seen a lot of people use them for hunting. I've seen a lot of people use them for bringing in wood. People go sledding in them. You can also use it to carry all of your ice fishing gear out onto the ice. Um, so you don't have to hold multiple items. I've seen people hook them up to snowmobiles or ATVs. Um, just really helpful device to have. Um, and they come in all different sizes. And then I have on here a long handled 30 inch ice scoop. Um, so if someone is sitting in a wheelchair or if someone can't bend over, um, this ice scoop is long enough that you don't need that to, you don't need to do any of those things in order to scoop out the slushies that might be in your ice fishing hole. Um, so that's a really helpful device and it's plastic. So it doesn't tend to freeze as much as the metal ones do. And then going back to your, um, if, if this is your thing uh, question, Kim really put in the comment that it is her thing and that's why she misses all types of fishing and hunting. So these are cool. Well, Kimberly, get a hold of me. I can help you. <laughs> we can go on an ice fishing adventure together. <laughs> and next slide. So with winter coming, um, we have social isolation, which is a serious problem, especially with the pandemic and all of that. So social isolation can cause higher rates of anxiety and depression. Um, it can cause heart failure, increase of death and hospitalization. You can have the feeling of loneliness, which can cause loss of interest, loss of sleep and loss of appetite. Um, for people of all ages, social isolation and or social connection is vital to survival. We need to depend on one another for support when we don't get the con connection we need, we're sadder, sicker, and more at risk for early death. So there's ways to prevent it, attending or hosting social gatherings, uh, connect virtually, connect in person, and get outside. Um, so a lot of times MATP will hold events for like outdoor recreation on the e-bikes that we have. Um, I plan on hosting events uh, for ice fishing if we ever get decent ice. Um, we have 
video gaming that you can do online if in-person things are not your thing. Um, there's plenty of things that MATP is willing to host. If you would like something in your area, you're more than welcome to get a hold of us and maybe we can host uh, just a big AT event on whatever you prefer to um, do, whether it's gaming, crafting, um, outdoor rec, uh, whatever you may need. And we would like to do that. And then Kimberly added in, um, she, she identifies with this because it's basically a shut in for almost 10 years. Okay. And also just to add in, I was going to add in, um, if you guys want any for further information on this, we will be hosting a Tech Tuesday for our last Tech Tuesday of this year on social isolation. So we'll talk more about this and events we may host and other resources we'll have. Yes, and on the resource guide, there is a flyer for uh, our social isolation as well. And next slide. So I think that's about it, which I sped through that. <laughs> is there any questions? Feel free to unmute um, or just type in the chat. Is there a favorite activity that folks like to do? Uh, Kimberly added in, I would love activities in the Genesee County area. Okay. And, and then Kelly added in, um, thank you for the info. You're welcome, Kelly. And I was just gonna ask, um, I, don't, I don't remember if maybe you had talked over in one of the slides about this, but is there like, AT when it comes to like snowmobiling and stuff along that lines? Or is it kind of like depends the situation? So I guess, a sn yeah, I there could be. So when I have looked, oh, my internet's becoming unstable. So when I looked uh, into different AT for snowmobiles, one thing that came up is there is a throttle cable that you can put on the opposite side. So if someone is unable to use their right hand, which is a lot of times where the throttle is on the right side of the snowmobile, you, there's a cable that can you can move the throttle to the left side. Um, hand warmers and seat warmers are another big thing. Uh, a lot of times people with disabilities need warmth. Um, different snow suits would be helpful and can consi be considered slide is that there are uh, snow suits or ice fishing suits that have floatable devices in them. So if there was ever a time that you fell through the ice, you would be able to, uh, you would be able to stay afloat, which and I hope then, never happens. <laughs> yeah. And then Kimberly also add in, are there a question of, are there any warming solutions for wheelchair users? So there's different, so when you look at like the adaptive clothing, there are like uh, parkas, I guess you can call them, that kind of sit over top of you. So they're gonna be thick material that sits over top of your legs. Um, there's heated suits. Um, I know Makita makes vests that are heated, um, battery operated. Um, and I believe that there are like a set of bibs that are, uh, have the same kind of technical things in them that have heated bibs. Um, and then I know that for, in our hunting AT, there is like a hand warmer. Um, so it's kind of like a, you wear it like a fanny pack and you just kind of put your hands inside the hand muff area and it has like a little ba battery operated heater. Um, so yeah, that's different options that you can use. Yeah, she had in the legs are the biggest issue because that cold at that area causes a lot of pain. Yes, and so that's where like the heated suits would definitely um, be helpful for that. And then also if you layer, sometimes it's a pain to put on many layers, but you wanna have like a base layer that will keep you warm um, and then different and then maybe a pair of sweatpants or jeans and then your outdoor gear whether it's you know a carhartt bibs or snow pants or whatever it may be
she also had, and she has used the handmuffs and also has to wear socks almost constantly. Yes. And they do make heated socks as well. Um, and then all, always a good pair of boots is a good solution for that too, which can be difficult to find. Um, but there are many options of different boots with different uh, grams of thinsulate in them and such. And then of course, keeping dry as well. Are there any other questions? Um, and then the last thing she had in was there was not a lot of items for wheelchair users in the area. So she doesn't even have a proper wheelchair. Yeah, I would definitely from, did you say you're Genesee? Genesee County, yep. Um, Kelly, if you're still on, uh, do you want to type in the chat of some resources for them? I don't know if Kelly's still on. I think she, oh, no, she is. She said so, we will need to get oh, back with them. So, yeah. So, yeah, if you would like to contact our program, we do have a contact um, link in our resource guide as well. Oh, and I, I mean, the link, uh, I'm sorry, the link, or, no, sorry, the slide is up as well. Um, yeah, contact us and feel free to tell us more. We can definitely get you where you need to be and yes, help you definitely. out with that. And I would definitely be happy. Um, I don't know if I said this in the beginning, but I would be happy to come to you. We travel all of Michigan, including the UP. Um, we were just in the UP last week in Marquette during their fun little snowstorm that they had. Um, but we do travel all of Michigan. Um, and if you're comfortable, then we come to your house. If not, we can meet in a public place, uh, whatever you're most comfortable with. So if you're interested in learning more about our organization, receiving training, AT demonstrations, or need information and assistance, please contact us. So I have my email address up here, which is Jalisa, J-I-L-E-E. -E, sa at mymdrc.org and then we have our general contact information our phone number is 517-333-2477 and then we also have our email and our website on here as well And we just had a few last comments. Um, Kimberly just wanted to say thank you and said, uh, you are all amazing. And then Anne added in, thank you and great job. Thank you. Um, and then Nick is going to put in the chat a little quick survey. Um, just kind of just helps us get info, some things that we may need to try differently next time. Um, just kind of gets us to be better at what we do. And now I have just sent it so everyone would like if you'd like to click that link and take the survey. Yeah, it helps us with just data information and to make sure that we reach all the counties we can and serve as many counties as we can across the state. And then Anna added in, thank you. Looking forward to the next one. Perfect. Thank you. And thank you all for coming today. And then Kimberly added in, I think that info would help others with low vision. Yes.
All right, I'm going to stop the Facebook live stream. Okay. I don't know if there's any last minute thoughts or questions before we. Good job. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. You sound rough. <laughs> don't I sound so healthy? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs>